Hi, I'm Chad with Move for Guitar. This lesson is from our series Cage Theory. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about seventh arpeggios using the cage system. First off, if you like all the diagrams for this series, including the diagrams for this lesson, you can download our free e-guide Cage Theory. But I am working on it as I'm filming this lesson, so it might not be available as you're watching this lesson. If it is available, a link will pop up on the screen that will allow you to download it. And like I said, it's free, so there's no reason not to download it when it is available. This is part 16 from our series Cage Theory. If you'd like to go back and start at the beginning, you can click the link on the screen. So now that you know how to find trad arpeggios using the cage system, I'm going to show you the same thing with the next most important type of arpeggio, which are seventh arpeggios. So we're going to look at major seventh, dominant seventh, and minor seventh arpeggios. And again, you can play arpeggios anywhere on your fretboard as long as you play them in order. With seventh, you're playing root three, five, seven in order, just over and over. That's just the chord tones that you're playing in order like a scale. But the cage system helps you chunk them up on your fretboard so that they're much easier to visualize and find. And obviously, there's lots of different options for playing them beyond these caged shapes, but the cage shapes are going to give you ability to visualize them and play them up and down your fretboard. And then you can combine them or change them later, but this will really help you see them. So we're just going to go through C, A, G, E, D like we did with the triads. And I'm going to start with major 7th and then do dominant 7th and then minor 7th. So we'll start with C major 7. So this is a C major 7 shape on your screen that you should know. And we're not worried about what the actual chord is as far as the root note. But we're just looking at the actual shape right now. So we're looking at the C major 7 shape. So this works for a little arpeggio. If you were to play at root 3, 5, 7, you have an arpeggio right there. The notes are in order. But then from 7 to 3, that doesn't work because you need another root. But if you want to play it on all the strings and get a much bigger shape, you can add in the other notes. And then you'd have root 3, 5, 7, root 3, 5. And then you can go all the way down to this 3 and then back up to root. And then you'd have a full C major 7 shape arpeggio. So you can see within this shape, you still have that C major 7 cage chord shape. But we've just added in the extra notes so that you can play it on each of the strings and that you can play it in order as an arpeggio is. Then the next one is a C dominant 7, so C7 shape. This one doesn't really have an arpeggio in it because you don't even have a fifth in here. So if we add in the extra notes around it, you can see the shape is right here. The C7 shape is right there, but we've added in the extra three fives and flat sevens, which make up a dominant seventh arpeggio. And then we can just play it in order. Root three, five, flat seven, root three, five, and then back down to the lowest note, and then back up to the root. And you'd have a nice C7 shape arpeggio that spans all the strings, so it's a really full arpeggio. Then you could do the C minor seven shape. Again, this doesn't have a fifth in it, so it's not a good shape for in arpeggio, if we add in the extra notes around it, now we can play it in order. Root flat 3, 5, flat 7, root flat 3, 5, all the way back down to this flat 3, and then back up to root. And you'd have a nice full shape for a C minor 7 arpeggio. And as you can see, the minor 7 cage chord is just sitting right here within it. Or a lot of people like to play this shape instead with this flat 3 right here. They put it on the unison note, which would give you this shape. And it doesn't really matter. You still have it surrounding the C minor 7 shape. And you could do this for every shape. You could do it for the A shape, the G shape, the E shape, for all the major 7, dominant 7, minor 7, which I don't want to do for this us, and it would just take way too long. So we're just going to look at this on the whole fretboard, and I'll show you where it all lies. So here's in the key of C. So we're looking at C major 7 cage chords up and down the fretboard. You have your C major 7 shape here, your A major 7 shape here, your G major 7 shape here, your E major 7 shape here, and your D major 7 shape here, and then you're just back up an octave higher with C major 7. So those are just the C major 7 cage chords. If we add in the extra 3, 5, 7s and roots that we need, so that we can play the arpeggios from the lowest strings to the highest string up and down the whole fretboard, it would look like this. So now you have C major 7 arpeggios up and down the whole fretboard, and still you just have your cage shapes living within here, and you can visualize the arpeggio around those shapes, which makes it much easier to find these up and down the fretboard instead of just randomly picking root 3, 5, 7s. Same thing with dominant 7 here, C7 cage chords up and down the fretboard. Here's a C7 shape, A7 shape, G7 shape, 
E7 shape and D7 shape and then you'd have your C7 shape right here which I left out a note the flat 7. So those are our C7 cage chords up the whole fretboard. If we add in the extra notes to make it C7 arpeggios it would look like this and still you just have your cage shapes living within there so it's really easy to visualize where the arpeggio lies. There's your C7 shape, here's your arpeggio with the extra notes. You can do that up the whole fretboard. You can do it with minor 7. Be the same thing. You have C minor 7 shape, A minor 7 shape, G minor 7 shape, E minor 7 shape, D minor 7 shape, and then again I left out this flat 7, but you'd have your C minor 7 shape right there again. And then you add in your extra notes to get C minor 7 arpeggios up and down the whole fretboard. And then again you just visualize where your cage chords are. So if I picked an E minor 7 right here, and then you can just visualize the extra notes around it. So that would be your E minor 7 arpeggio shape with your E minor 7 chord shape, cage shape within it. So now you have ways to chunk out your fretboard and not just have to visualize a mess of notes. You can actually break it apart so that it's easy to see. And like I said, you could really play C minor 7 arpeggios anywhere just starting on the lowest note or, or any of the notes as long as you go in order. But if I started here I could go root, flat 3, 5, flat 7, root, flat 3, 5, flat 7, root, oops, flat 3, 5. That would be a minor 7 arpeggio. but until you've gotten good at visualizing arpeggios where they are, that can be pretty difficult just to see that quickly and play it. So if you use the cage system to break it apart on your fretboard, you can start there, learn them, you can play arpeggios up and down the whole fretboard, and then you can start combining them or finding different ways to play them that break out of the cage system. But the cage system is a really good place to start for visualizing them. So that's how you can use the cage system to find seventh arpeggios. Go ahead and move on to the next lesson where I'm going to show you how Cage seventh chords work with the major scale modes and be sure to download the e-guide. All the diagrams are in there and be sure to subscribe because we had at least one new lesson every day.